Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome once again to a Greater Lawrence Chamber of Commerce Chamber Chat. I am Brad Sloffenstein, President of the Greater Lawrence Chamber. Today, I am excited because we have with us a guru, and that guru is our PR guru, Jeff Daler of Daler Public Relations. Jeff, welcome to Chamber Chat. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your expertise with us today. Well, good afternoon, Brad. I'm happy to be here, and I'm looking forward to uh, stump the guru all the questions that are coming my way. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So let's start off. Tell us all about yourself, what you do, and tell us how we're all going to be rich and famous. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, the first part's easy. The second part's a little harder, but I'll see what I can do. Uh, about me, my name's Jeff Daler, and uh, I own a company called Daler PR. Uh, Daler PR has been in business since 2011. Um, our tagline is educate, communicate, motivate. And what we mean by that is that we help to educate your audiences through communications processes and motivate them to do what it is that we want them to do. And uh, that can be a, just a variety of things, obviously. It can be whether it's a retailer trying to get sales to uh, a school corporation trying to pass a referendum. Um, the favorite things that we have to do are, are not necessarily tailored to one market or industry or another. Um, mostly we like to work with people who are doing something good for people in the world. And, uh, that can be anything from a product to a service to, uh, you know, to some big project or something like that. Um, we've got, uh, several people that work for me and we actually were sort of built for, uh, the pandemic, I think, because uh, everything we do is virtual. I, I work for, out of a home office. I have um, some, some of my team members. Uh, one, one of my team members works uh, out of Minneapolis, Minnesota from her home office. Uh, another team member that works out of his home office in Fishers and another team member that works out of his home office in Nashville, Tennessee. So, <laughs> so we're sort of all over the place. Um, and, but we don't need to be all over the place to get, I mean, we can be all over the place to get work done because it's, this is what we're all about now is we're online and that's kind of the way, the way we have to be, uh, during a pandemic, even though we're trying to open up a little bit, um, rich and famous, eh, maybe we'll see if we can get there as the questions come in and, uh, and as we go forward. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, well, I will start with the first question because I probably have several questions. I bet you do. Uh, let's start with branding, the importance of branding, and the importance of consistency in branding. Oh, that is perfect because one of the things, Brad, that you talked about uh, is, as the topic for today, uh, which is how do, you, how, do you, how do you survive in a pandemic? Um, and the first thing is be you. And that's what branding is, is, is who are you? Uh, who is your, uh, you know, what, what do you do? Who do you serve? Who are you? And uh, often people say, um, you know, what, what does branding really mean? What is branding? Branding is what people uh, say about you when you are not in the room. So if you think about things like uh, Disney, I mean, they've got a huge brand and, and usually when, when Disney's out in the room, people say, what an experience. I went to Disney and it was an incredible experience. Or I, I have Disney Plus and I'm watching incredible uh, movies and, and other, uh, other uh, entertainment content. Their brand is, is something that puts a smile on your face. That's, that's who they are. Um, so what is your brand as a company or a business? You have to know who you are and be out there um, so that people can see you and, and, and know who you are and say, yeah, that's somebody that I want to go to. Does that make sense? It does. So how does that relate towards how do you develop your brand in the beginning and know that that's going to translate into sales, reputation? What, what all goes into making that brand? Obviously, the, the end result is people talk about you in a positive light. How do you get from point A to point B? Yeah, you know, and you can hear about that uh, from people who are starting a business and say, okay, well, I need to develop my brand. But then you also hear about that as people maybe 
find their niche in a in, and evolve, and now they have to rebrand. And um, and so um, when you start out, um, you have to say, well, okay, here's what the market has out there, and, and here's what I'm interested. In. I want to do something, and and, and actually, one of uh, I, so I'm, I'm a big fan right here on the fort of Triton Brewery um, and Bistro, which is a new addition to their brand, the Bistro part of it. Um, and when they started, they said, well, okay, here's, here's who we're going to be. And I think that they exemplified their brand really well. Um, and, uh, and so part of it is your image. What is the look? Um, you know, when you go to the Triton Bistro, the, you've got their logo, but you also have, here's what the here's what the feel, the vibe is there. And then when you look at their, their, their beers, each of them sort of helps to give you a, a picture of who they are, what their brand is. Um, if you have to evolve, if you're changing, it, and, and Triton decided to evolve, they said, we gotta add some food. They had had food trucks and, and other, you know, uh, other ways that they could get food into their, their brew pub space. Uh, but eventually, I think that the demand was, man, you ought to be making food right here. And so they said, well, okay, well, let's make some food. What kind of food is that going to be? What fits our brand? And, um, you know, if you think about a craft beer, um, it's different than a Budweiser. It's, it's a, it, it is something that is it's something special. It's something different. It's, uh, you can price it a little higher because it's it's um, unique. And so, so okay, you're not going to go with, you know, just plain burgers and fries at this unique place. You've got to find a, a menu that, uh, that captures a little bit of your brand. So they came up with some really creative um, uh, food products that, that pair nicely with their beer, and it enhances the whole experience and enhances their brand. Um, I can't remember if that is going the right direction to answer your question, Brad, but, uh, but I, I, I just had to talk about Triton. <laughs> okay, well, we'll have another episode where we'll, we'll, do, we'll do nothing but talk about beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be attending that one. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned a couple things on that. Um, importance of logos is the first part of the question. And then the second part is, consistency and message towards your branding yeah. and how do you tie the logo into that? Yeah, that's perfect. You know, consistency is so important. We, uh, in the PR biz, we talk about the three C's, uh, clear, concise, and consistent. And so when you're trying to get your message out, you want to make sure that it's uh, in that clear, concise, consistent, it, it's, uh, you, you say what it is that you want to say quickly um, and then when you re-say it, you are consistently using the same messages over and over and over again. So people, again, know who you are, know what your brand is. Um, um, uh, the consistent part, I'm trying to think of an, ex of, of a, um, uh, of, of an example, but, but um, you know, at, like you're going to do with this chamber chat, um, you're going to put a, a, a graphic on the front end and on the back end, and it's going to have your logo, and and um, and it's going to have uh, the color scheme and the font or whatever. All of that stuff is going to be consistent, and you want that consistency to lay over all of the ways that you communicate, whether it's your website, um, it's your blog, it's your Facebook page, or your other social media channels. Uh, each of them needs to be branded in a way that people can instantly recognize I'm at Greater Lawrence Chamber of Commerce now, or I'm at Triton Brewery now. And uh, so, so that, um, uh, so that when, when you see it, you go, okay, that's them. So um, I also wanted to touch a little bit and get your opinion on, obviously right now, some industries have had a bigger slowdown than others. There's a few industries that have picked up. The importance of advertising now and continuing to advertise now even though your your revenues might be a little less than normal yeah this is a challenge because often 
what happens is the first thing to kind of get cut when you're in a, a revenue downturn is, is to cut out the advertising or the public relations work. And uh, we actually, there was a, there was a chamber sponsored event a few months ago through the, the, um, the current and Geist, the, the newspaper group um, that brought in a speaker who said, when, 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 when the econ economy goes down, that's the time you have to ramp up. And the reason is that you might be able to take some extra market share from other folks that did not ramp up in their advertising um, and then um, and let people know that you're still out there, you're still doing, you're still doing what it is that you're doing. Um, uh, I'm seeing um, is like, like uh, oh my goodness, Family Leisure, which is up here on Pendleton Pike, they are, um, uh, they're a they're a bigger chain uh, organization. They've got they've got stores all, in, in many places in the country. I think it's maybe a dozen stores or something like that. But holy cow, have you ever seen a, a TV commercial for Family Leisure during the news? Good lord, they're like advertising three or four times during a half hour span. Um, and um, for them, one they realize that okay, people aren't coming to their stores right now because because uh, we're in the middle of the pandemic, you can't leave your house and they couldn't be open. But um, there, some of their some of their advertising has been really great in saying um, there's I uh, I don't know if I can share my screen or not, but but there's a there's a great Facebook post that they put out there um, that has um, let's see if I can find it to remember it here. Um, uh, it has a uh, has a photo of John and Lo John Lennon and Yoko uh, laying in bed and they're snuggling and it says my idea of quarantine and then underneath it is a photo of Chip and Joanna Gaines from HGTV and it says my wife's idea of quarantine and they're working on upgrading their house uh, while you know my idea was let's let's just relax okay. <laughs> Um, and so, so the family leisure folks are like, this is an opportunity. Um, you're at home. Why don't you come out and, and, or, or better yet, why don't you go online, order some stuff from family leisure. We'll come to your house. We'll build it for you. And then you can enjoy it while you're stuck at home. Um, they looked at the pandemic as an opportunity, um, and, and also they looked at the pandemic as a way to grow their online business. So one of the things that, that I was thinking about for today's presentation is first be you, but then second, uh, be online. Um, we all have to be online. We're online right now, um, but we gotta be online to be able to sell or whatever good or service it is that we're trying to sell. And, um, um, people, that's where people are right now. And, and, and we say in the PR business, you know, go where the people are, people are online. So what is your, what does that mean? It means you have to be really active online because things are changing and evolving like every minute it seems like as, as the pandemic ebbs and flows and, 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 you know, at one minute, like Triton Brewery was at 75% open and now they're back down to 50% open. And, so you have, to, you have to be active and you have to be up to date. You have to say, here's where we're at today. And tomorrow, here's something new. Here's where we're at today. Um, so that people can find you and find out how they can, how they can access uh, the services or goods that you're providing. Right. I have one last question before I open it up. Um, what are mistakes that you see people make in their marketing, their branding, their messaging? Mm -hmm. um, and what separates the people making mistakes from the people that are highly successful? Yeah, I think, um, I think it's lack of doing some of those things that I'm talking about, lack of not being online, lack of not being up to date, um, lack of, of, um, of not setting expectations. So, um, uh, uh, a, a week ago, I went out to Flat Out Motorsports up, in, up right at the edge of Fishers and, and Indianapolis and uh, had, had the, the tires replaced on my motorcycle. And when I walked up to the front door, uh, there's a big sign on the front door that says, um, you know, you can't come in without your mask on, which, okay, it was 
you know, by that time, the mayor had already announced that, yes, you got to wear masks. And, I, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that and went back to my car and got my mask. Um, but nowhere on their website or on their Facebook page does it say um, you have to wear a mask if you're coming in here right now. Um, and I think it's a good reminder to set expectations that this is what it's like right now. And, and that's important for a segment of people who, um, uh, who want to be safe. So they want to know that you're safe if they're going to come to your showroom at Flat Out Motorsports and look at the variety of, of, of uh, toys that you've got to sell there. Um, um, some, of those, some of your audience, some of your market wants to know that you're wearing masks and that you're requiring their customers to wear masks and, and all that stuff. Um, but we talked to the owner while we were there and he said, um, holy cow, we had to, you know, we, we, we tried to do that. We tried to set expectations. We put out there on our Facebook page that we're requiring masks and uh, a certain group of people just hammered on them. They just said, you know, no way I'm not doing that. And, 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 uh, and you guys are idiots for doing that and, and whatever. It's a really hard time to set expectations and, um, and, uh, and try to, appease or at least or, or, or try to ha try to make everybody happy there there's we're, this we're not in a place where we can make everybody happy right now um ask any school superintendent how do you make everybody happy i mean it can't be done um but if you can be kind um then i think that that can help so how do you respond if there are negative comments uh on your social media feed um you have to respond um, with kindness, with patience, uh, with understanding, um, and not alienate further some of your um, some of your audience. Um, and so, so are some folks doing that right or wrong? Well, they're avoiding the issue by just not putting anything out there. Um, and and yes, you're avoiding uh, getting those trolls getting mad at you on social media. But what you're not doing is sharing um, what your expectations are. And, and if, that, if that market that, that is concerned about health and safety um, wants to know that you're safe, they, they wanna know that by looking at your website or your social media channels. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so we will open this up to our assembled masses. Who has questions for Jeff? Okay, I'll jump in here on uh, social media. Uh, you know, I, I saw something today where some business, uh, and I think he was in the gun and ammo business or something like that, showed pictures of all this uh, black uh, driveway ceiling type stuff and said, who's with me? I'm going down and, and pasting that over the Black Lives Matter uh, piece that, uh, that had just been added to Indiana Avenue. And it's like, okay, are you an idiot or what? Because, <laughs> you know, his base might believe that that thing doesn't belong there. But right now, this thing is getting spread all over the place, complete with, here's a list of all this guy's businesses that you should not be doing business with. Yeah, what do you, you know, I, I just throw that out there as an example uh, as to, Something that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, no, I, okay, you're the, you're this guy, and you realize, oops, maybe I screwed up. Is the damage been done for good or what? Oh, that's a great question. And uh, okay, who amongst us, and raise your hand, thinks that social media is a cesspool? <laughs> okay, I'm I'm only right there with point. you. Only to a point. Only to a point. You know, there is a cesspool part of it. <laughs> right, <laughs> and I agree with you, Russ. There are, there's plenty of examples of people, people using social media for good, not evil. And then there's also, sadly, plenty of examples of people using social media for evil. Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll stay flat out. I'm not in favor of covering up the Black Lives Matter mural. In fact, I would like to promote that. Um, that's my own personal opinion. Um, and that's apparently what social media is all for, is to, is to express your personal opinions um, you know, if you're a, a guy with a gun and ammo store, um, and you are being you, you are working your brand, 
um, there's probably a certain number of your clientele that probably agree with that viewpoint. Um, and, uh, you know, probably, I mean, I don't, I don't know, you know, which business you're talking about, but, but probably uh, I would say that there may be going to be, a bit, you know, more, more rebels when it comes to uh, playing it safe around the pandemic as well. And, uh, and a lot of their member, a lot of their um, clientele are going to agree with, uh, with the uh, the owner on that, and so you know probably he's doing. You know I I, I don't want to promote the viewpoint, but he's probably doing the right thing for his business because it is playing to his um, his customers, his his uh, his market base, and um, um, you know I the, when I when I think about okay what kind of trouble can you get yourself into. Will he get criticized for that viewpoint? Probably. Um, he has a bunch of other businesses that are not gun and ammo places, though, that uh, oh, everyday yeah. Joe might, you and I might go to. I don't know what they are, but uh, sure. you know, they're not related to that. Yeah. So, so you're, the part of your question was, what if once the genie's out of the bottle, is the genie out of the bottle? And, yes. And when it comes to um, you know, stating your opinion on some of these things, yeah, the genie's out of the bottle, and our, we get these examples every day of, of um, you know, politicians that that stated something ten years ago, and it comes back to haunt their campaign today. Even though this is a decade ago that they may have stated this, um, I think that what it tells us is to be very careful um, and to think through what we say online. Um, whether we're representing our business or we're representing our, ourselves as individuals, um, is that my brand? And is that um, uh, uh, something that, uh, that I'm going to be uncomfortable with if it shows up in the headline of a newspaper tomorrow morning? Um, and that's one of those things where, you know, um, you know, we try to train people from the human resources perspective you know, if you're not comfortable with that showing up in a headline tomorrow, then do not put it in print, in an email, in a text message on your social media or wherever. If you feel like you have to express that opinion, then, then make a phone call to someone. Um, but otherwise, if, if, you know, if you, if you put it out there in print, it can be found again. And, uh, and your, your business will either suffer or, or, or uh, grow as a result of the things that you say. So as, as a follow-up to that, um, how important is it that uh, the people that own businesses kind of keep their message along in line with whatever their business is? And if somebody goes off the rails and expresses an opinion on their personal page, I, you know, typically we've seen that happen several times that, if, that also affects the business page. How do you rectify that and get get your business back on track. Yeah, you know, um, it, it can happen. And can you get your business back on track? Um, yes, and the, and the way you do that is with a sincere apology um, and then uh, telling people how you are going to not let this happen again. So everyone makes mistakes. Um, I, I've done some, some consulting for crisis communications things that are, that are uh, oh my goodness, just absolutely horrible things that people did, mis you know, mistakes that people made. Um, and um, uh, I, I, I helped with a, with a leader go through a, a situation where they had a DUI, it was very public. Um, and, um, and so his action plan was to first state that yes, this happened, uh, second, I'm very sorry that this happened. Third, I'm, I'm entering treatment. Fourth, um, um, you know, this is not going to happen again. And these are the steps I'm taking to make sure that it doesn't. Um, it, it's, a, it's a horrible situation to be in. Um, but if you don't um, apologize, if you don't say what you're going to do to fix this problem, whatever that problem might be, um, people don't trust you anymore. And once you've lost their trust, then it's very difficult to regain it and it's very difficult for your business to thrive 
because you've got a reputation now that um, that has this little blotch on it. And if you get more blotches, eventually you're just, you can't be in business anymore. So I think I saw somebody else that had their hand up, Ross. Thanks. Hey, Jeff, first of all, thanks for your help that you provide for the chamber and our government relations committee, much appreciated. All right. Uh, my question is, What's the composition of your client base? Is it all over the board or do you focus on certain types of businesses? And my second question is, how do you answer the question, why should I hire a P PR firm? What's your 30 second elevator speech? Sure, um, I appreciate it Ross and I also appreciate all the things that you do for the chamber and, and especially leading that government relations uh, committee. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, first of all, what 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 does daily PR? Where where are we at? What space are we in? Um, like I said before, we are we like to help people who are doing things that we think is making a difference in the world, and that can be just about anything. Um, you know, if you're a pharmaceutical company that's making a drug that is helping people get better, we like that. Um, we do an awful lot of work in the in the public sector, so for schools and uh, cities and counties. Uh, states. Um, um, we, we enjoy doing project work that involves uh, um, providing information to people so that they can make a decision on whether they can support an issue or not. Um, but, you know, just as, as important to us is um, for the, those companies that are working on, let's, let's say the state has a contract with a company to provide uh, architectural or or, um, or uh, road building uh, services or something like that. Um, you know what, that's in the public, public good and we wanna help with that. So like we would do community engagement around projects like, um, you know, here's a, here's a project that's gonna expand this road from two lanes to four. We're gonna add in a center lane for turns and, and whatever. Um, we help with community engagement around, okay, how is this gonna impact your business while construction is going on? Um, how is this going to benefit your business over a course of time um, once once that project is completed? And um, so so it's a wide variety of things that we that we do. So uh, you know what what's the elevator speech? I mean the elevator speech really is that we've got a proven track record of of educating and communicating and motivating people to do the things that you want them to do. Um, and uh, and so. Um, so if, you know, basically any company or, or business, uh, or, or organization that needs help in telling their story and getting people to do what they want them to do, then we can help with that. It's, and it's, and it's, you know, from the tactical perspective, Ross, it's all over the place and anything from upfront research, whether it's uh, surveys or, or um, focus groups or, or uh, you know, there's a wide variety of different research things that you can do to learn about your audience all the way through the whole process of developing a, a plan um, and then executing that plan and evaluating it to see if it was uh, successful or not. Very good. Thank you. So, Pam, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question related to social media. How do social media come into play with getting the message out? I have to say during the mayor election, one thing that surprised me, I was playing a game called Word and Mayor Collier's ads would come up. And I'm like, okay, how did this little niche figure out that this might be something I was interested in? So how do you recommend and help people with social media advertising? There is so many, so so much that you can do with a combination of just being out there on your own social media channels to then also placing ads uh, in so many different online locations. And so the so um, uh, in fact, I, I I remember somebody telling me once that um, that uh, you know by not targeting some of their Google ads, they ended up with clients that were from so far away that they weren't able to handle their, their issues, uh, their, they, their whatever, whatever, whatever challenge it was that they were trying to overcome. And, and so, uh, so it's just a wonderful thing that you're able to use social media to target zip codes, um, demographics, 
um, you know, you, you could be you could be trying to promote something just to, you know, women ages 40 to 50 with, uh, with teenage kids or something like that. And you'd be able to target your message to directly to that audience and, um, and then have a, have a message that speaks directly to that particular audience that you're trying to reach. And, um, so there's, uh, and, and, and there's, there are so many different venues, uh, that you can use, um, um, uh, whether it's, you know, you can work through, you know, for instance, if you wanted, if you wanted some video, um, you could work with a local television station to have their ad department produce an ad for you that would run on their channel, but then you would be given rights to use that ad to use on your own social media or, or whatever. Um, you could work through Current and Geist and, and have ads created, but then that ad campaign would go, uh, you know, the paper is, you know, maybe or maybe not that useful, but their online presence is greatly uh, beneficial to be able to reach specific audiences. Um, so there's a lot of, and, and there's, and, and okay, where, you know, how do you do that? Uh, anything from, you can kind of figure it out for yourself in some cases, or you can hire a marketing firm, or you can hire an ad agency uh, to be able to help you with all these different things. Um, and, and so if you've got, you know, if you're a big company, if you got a, and you have a lot of money, um, an ad agency is going to be perfect for you to help you to, to tailor all the different ways that you can, that you can use um, uh, advertising to help to grow your business. If you're just you, you know, and sometimes that's what a lot of us are is a small business that, that doesn't have uh, the capability, the resources to be able to buy into an ad agency and, and all the things that they provide. Um, you still have the ability to get on Facebook to, to put a, a, a post up uh, on your on your uh, organization's channel and boost that post uh, to the zip codes in your area um, and to and to to um, to, to um, segment out the audience demographics that you want to segment out and um, and it's and so there are there's a wide range of how much you need to be able to get into this anywhere from, you know, I've got a, I've got a $10,000 a month uh, budget for, for advertising to I've got 20 bucks that I'm going to spend on Facebook boosts this month. And you can, you can promote yourselves somewhere between 20, about $20 and 20,000. I'll jump in here because I, I do that for some of my clients and, uh, a few years back, there was a nice seminar in town uh, uh, that was first time I ever met anybody that actually worked for Facebook. Uh, they, it was a combination of uh, Congressman Andy, Andre Carson's office and the National Organization of Women in Business, and they, they did this free event. It was, you know, it really taught you how to, you know, do what you're talking about, anything from $20 to thousands of dollars to boost your post and to how to go about doing it. And I I had a concert client at the time that uh, I was just starting to do that with, and I've been able to do this for lots of companies at this point. Now, what I do know is fairly recently, they did some kind of online version of this. So if you poke around and Google, you know, Facebook online seminars, uh, it, it's out there and you can basically learn the same stuff. It just, you won't be doing it in person. So you don't get the nice swag bag at the end, I guess is what it boils down to. <laughs> So, all right, well, we're getting towards the end of our, uh, our discussion here. So, Jeff, if I'm not mistaken, you are from Minnesota. Is that correct? That is correct. I moved to Indy four years ago uh, following my wife, who uh, got a great job here, and I said, I've got a, I've, I've got a, a, a portable business. I can, I can do that. And uh, holy cow, we moved here, and it's been fab fabulous. I really enjoyed my time here. That's great. Well, then you will be proud to know today at lunch, I received a trunk load delivery of Schmitz and Greenbelt. Oh, yes. I have enjoyed a few of those. And the Greenbelt Nordeast is even better than the original Greenbelt. Actually, the Nordeast is probably my all-time favorite, and I received a mix of regular and Nordeast. So I've got Nordeast. Excellent. <laughs> two miles of where I'm sitting. So. Wow. Uh, 
in that vein, my last question, completely off topic, but on topic of our last little thing, um, what is your favorite beer? If you could only drink one beer the rest of your life, what would that be? And then second part is, what's the best beer you've had since the pandemic started? Oh, man. Oh, those are such great questions because I got to be honest, it's almost impossible to make a decision uh, um, because there are so many favorites that I've got. Um, I, I used to always say, I mean, so, so I love, uh, in the summertime, I'm a big fan of something crisp. Um, and, and, uh, so there's, there's, there's lots of, uh, especially IPAs that I love. I will tell you that, um, Russ. The, yeah, <laughs> okay, there we go right there. <laughs> I will, I will tell you that the two favorite IPAs that I have, one is Dragonfly from Upland. And the other, of course, has to be the rail splitter from Triton. But, oh man, you can't put me in this because then once I get to, once I get to um, uh, winter time, then I have to go with the, with the dead iced out because uh, then I love dark beers in the winter time. So, but, uh, but yes, one thing that we can get, Russ, is uh, daytime drinking. So, <laughs> I, I have to explain this. I, I'm uh, watching in my kitchen. And I have one bottle of this great beer from Shoreline Brewery in Michigan City, where I was up on vacation in Lake Michigan uh, about a month or so ago and wanted to go to the brewery there. Uh, and this beer is called Curse the Goat. And it was brewed before the Cubs won the World Series. Uh, and every year on opening day, they tapped it. Well, this funny thing happened. And the idea was that it would be around until the Cubs ever won a World Series. Well, once they did, the thing really took off. So uh, uh, they, they make it available on a far greater basis. And I, I had it. So I basically described this as the best beer I've had since the pandemic hit. I'm trying to, f I, I just had a beer on, on a Saturday that was my favorite of the pandemic. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to figure out what it, what it was now. I'm trying to Google it while we're talking here. But um, here's an interesting thing. So I belong to Indie Runners. I'm a, I'm a runner. I, I like to do long distance running. Every Saturday morning, we go for a run at 7:30 in the morning uh, uh, on the Monon Trail. And um, afterwards, uh, there's a little rehydration that occurs out of the trunk of one of our members' cars. And, um, and, oh my gosh, this guy comes up with beers from, uh, you know, you never, it's just amazing uh, the stuff that he comes up with. Lots of, of Indiana um, uh, craft breweries, but then some others that are out, uh, you know, out uh, in a wider area. And there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a kind of a, um, a citrusy, juicy IPA, hazy, juicy IPA that, that he had. And I, and now I can't remember the name of the, of the, uh, of the company. So I'll come up with that. I'll share that with you, uh, Brad, offline, and we'll, we'll figure that out. All right. Very <laughs> good. Well, Jeff Daler of Daler Public Relations, thank you very much for joining us. Hey, thanks, everybody. for Good to see you all. I'm glad you could be here today. Sheila, especially you. I haven't thank seen you, you in quite a while, so I got to see you soon. No, it's great to see you. I'm very excited. So thank you. This is great information, too. I appreciate it. We can use good. it. Excellent. <laughs> So, and for those of you watching, keep in mind tonight, we probably have our best night of the year for our Greater Lawrence Chamber cruise-in over on Otis Avenue along Lawton Loop. So come on out. Jeff, if you show up, I will have some cold Northeasts in the cooler. There we go. Uh, also keep in mind on August, Tuesday, August 25th, we have Aletha Dunstan from the Reuse Authority who's gonna be at our luncheon. So get your reservations in for that. Um, I believe that luncheon's at the Starrett Center. Is that correct, Erica? You can just nod. Okay, there we go. Uh, September 8th, we have our golf outing. That's gonna be at the Fort Golf Course. Make sure you get your reservations in for that. We're still looking for sponsors, as well as sponsors for the cruise in. And then uh, you mentioned the current and Geist. They did a nice little story on us today, uh, talking about the governor, who's gonna be our keynote speaker at our mm -hmm. annual membership luncheon. So uh, be sure to get your tables reserved for that. and. We're also, uh, we have some sponsorship opportunities. So again, Jeff, thank you for joining us. Thank you all of you who watched this week and we'll be back next week. Uh, you should know our guest, hopefully within the next 24 hours. So uh, you all have a great week. I'll see you next time. Take care, bye. All right.